Hello, everybody. Welcome to Zone Defense. We talk all things NBA and NFL. Be sure to follow us on Spotify at Zone Defense Podcast and on Twitter at Zone Defense Pod. We also wanted to say thank you to all of our new subscribers from the last few weeks. Um, and if you are watching this video and you haven't yet subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below because it really helps out our channel a lot. Also, drop a comment and let us know who you think is the best running back in the league. Today, we will be doing a tier list of the 2021 NFL running backs. How's it going, guys? I'm good, Drew. I'm really excited to do another tier list with you guys. Um, the wide receiver one, that was a lot more debated than I think this one will going to be. But um, I think, you know, I think the disparity between the running backs is a little bit less than with the wide receivers. Yeah, I agree with that, Roman. Uh, wide receivers are definitely my hottest, you know, position to debate, but I still really like running backs. I have a lot of passion in here, and I definitely have a, a hot take or two, as you you may know from the previous videos that we've done. But, uh, you know, I'm really excited for this one with you guys, too. Yeah, me too. And before we do that, though, let's talk about the big NFL news that happened uh, just uh, just yesterday. I'm recording this on Monday. Uh, it's Julio Jones. I don't believe it's official official yet, but it's basically no, it official. Is. It is. It's official official now. Um, and Julio Jones is going to the Tennessee Titans in exchange for, I think it's him and a sixth rounder for a second rounder this year. And I believe a fourth rounder the year after that. Um, so not a whole lot for a hall of fame caliber. I know he's on the decline, but it's still Julio freaking Jones and that's not a ton. Um, but, uh, let's just hear Chris, let's hear your thoughts first. Uh, what do you think about that deal when it first went through? Well, obviously the Titans won this trade. I don't think, I think that's pretty obvious. It's pretty much a, the same return as what the, uh, the Cardinals gave up to get DeAndre Hopkins. I know Julio's a little bit older, not as good as DeAndre Hopkins is, but he's still an elite wide receiver in this league. And, and I, I think this Titans offense is going to be one of the best, if not the best in the NFL. Now, I mean, they have the best wide receiver duo in the league. They got one of the best running backs in the league and they have a really, really good quarterback that is extremely underrated as well. Uh, I don't remember where you guys had him exactly in the tier list because I was not there, but I would consider Ryan Tannehill a top 10 quarterback in the NFL right now. I think he's very good. And, and Drew, I saw you you know, shrug your eyes a little bit, but I'm, I got this tweet pulled up right now. How good has he been? This is an NFL on CBS tweet. Um, in the last – since he took over the starting job 26 games ago, he's got a higher QB rating than Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he's got a thousand less passing yards, but he's got more total touchdowns by the, you know, the difference of 66 to 58. He's had one more interception, 12 to 11, and a higher completion percentage than Mahomes in the last 26 games. So this is a guy that honestly has played at an elite caliber level the last two seasons, pretty much, and and he doesn't get enough respect for it. So I think people are really going to start to see that. And you know, if if I was a betting man. I t- I take the odds on Ryan Tannehill to potentially win the MVP if this team's going to be really good. You never know. I know he's not the best quarterback in the league, but the odds might be right and and might be favorable for him to to pay out some serious cash for sure. Uh, I'll just say that in our quarterback tier list, Drew was a little bit higher on Tannehill than I was actually. Although I am a big fan of him as well um, after his move from Miami, but. Uh, I do think he'll be obviously better because of this trade. I didn't think it would be get done as quickly as they said it was going to get done. Um, and considering they didn't have to give up much, is it's very favorable on their end. Uh, but back to Tannehill, I think he got a little bit clowned a little bit because uh, people are just making fun of his deep throw inaccuracies or something like that, which I never really noticed. But I think he'll be fine with having Julio and A.J. Brown. And regardless of whether he's good or not, they still have Derrick Henry in the backfield. So uh, it's, I think it's a clear w- division winner here. Um, you guys might think differently. but I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they're the big winners of this trade. And Atlanta, I don't think they're big losers either because you still have Pitts coming up. I think you have some nice backup wide receivers that can fill in the, the holes. So I don't think they're the biggest losers considering they didn't get much back for them. But um, it's, it does, it's a bit controversial with their choicing of uh, keep Matt Ryan as well. So that could be um, talked about as well. But overall, I think it's decent on both sides. Yeah, I actually – I think – Roman, you put Tannehill, I don't remember the tiers names we had for that episode, but I think you put him in like average. And I think I moved him up to like solid or like good or whatever. Um, just because of the stats you rattled off there, Chris. I'm just a little worried for Tennessee. I mean, I know obviously Hulu is good, but 
Um, they lost Arthur Smith. It's going to be interesting to see how that offense works without him. I think he's a really good play caller. I think it'll be just fine. <laughs> um, Julio is also old. He's had some injury issues in recent years. He's had some problems finding the end zone. Um, AJ Brown's also had some injury concerns. I'm not saying I'm not. You know, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I'm not saying the Titans are going to suck or anything, but I'm just saying there's some concerns. Their defense was also horrendous last season. And I know, Chris, you don't like him, but they did lose Corey Davis last year, and they also <laughs> lost Johnu Smith um, from their offense. So um, I, I personally, I like the Colts a little more than the Titans right now. I think they're going to be really, really good. They're both going to be good teams. They're both going to be close, but um, they both have some serious question marks. But um, it's, obviously the ceiling for the um, – Titans is a Super Bowl appearance or at least even a championship, but I guess I just have some reservations about, um, yeah, there's their, their offensive as a whole, I guess, is my opinion. And also Derrick Henry, too. Um, we haven't, he's, I know he's a, he's good, but it seemed like some people kind of started to figure him out there last year down the stretch. I don't know. And I, last year, I know I was the bona fide Titans hater in the offseason. I think Roman was the only one of us that had him, them making the playoffs, um, and they proved me wrong last year. So if they do it again this year, Kudos to them, but um, I guess I'm just not like. There's a lot of people who seem like, oh, Tennessee is a Super Bowl favorite. Let's go. And I'm not ready to kind of get there yet. Um, and even people like Chris, who's like Tannehill is going to win the MVP. Um, I'm interested. Like just like we saw Tannehill with Gase, how awful he was, and then you went into Smith um, and how good he was. I'm interested to see how he goes to another another um, offensive coordinator because as much as I like Tannehill, I think he is dependent on who is calling the shots there and who the coaching staff and what the schemes are. So that's my, that's my concern. And he could, again, he could win the MVP. Who knows? I'm just a little more hesitant um, than I guess other people. Yeah, I'm, I'm not making the same mistake twice with this Texans team. They've rebuilt the defense. They actually look like they might have a solid defense this season. Even if they're average, it doesn't matter. This offense is going to be extremely good as you long Titans? as you said yeah, Texans. Titans. Oh, my okay. apologies. Um, but the Titans are, their offense is going to be insanely good. Like I said, possibly the best in the NFL uh, and I, I didn't say Tano is going to win the MVP. I just said I, I will. I wonder what the odds are that he does win because if they're if they're you know a little bit higher odds, I would be willing to make that bet because I think he's going to have a really good season as long as these receivers stay healthy and they have two alpha dog number one receivers in Julio Jones and AJ Brown to throw the ball to. I don't think the losses of Corey freaking Davis and Janu Smith, who neither one of them. I mean, Janu hasn't had over like 450 yards in a season, so he basically was irrelevant. And and I do like Janu, but he's really not that good. And then Corey Davis, you know by the wide receiver tier list. My opinions on him are not the same as they are. Drew, I think he's a very average receiver and has been a gigantic bust in the NFL draft and really hasn't proven anything. So losing him and, and Janu and then getting Julio for a second round pick, I'm taking, I'm taking Julio Jones all day with this rebuilt defense as well. So I think they're going to be extremely good. And I think Tannehill is going to feast on defenses this year. And if we haven't just, said it already, I think, Chris, you're buzzing just because you have A.J. Brown and Julio both in your dynasty team in your lineup. So I am pretty excited that. for it. Pretty excited for it. They're going to get everything. If you if you want to look at it from a fantasy standpoint, I would say major upgrade for Calvin Ridley, major upgrade for Kyle Pitts, major downgrade for Matt Ryan, and then for the offense of the Titans, I would say really not I, – I think it's pretty lateral for both A.J. Brown and Julio Jones, and then a major, major upgrade for Ryan Tannehill, who now probably will be a quarterback that I am looking to target in every league that I do because I think he's going to be – like I said, I think he's going to be really good for fantasy too. I think he's going he's gonna to eat. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I think the only fantasy take I disagree there with, I think Ryan too. I think it's more lateral for Matt Ryan than maybe – maybe it's a slight downgrade. I don't think it's – like, like I said, Julio's had injury issues. He was hurt most of last year. Matt, so, like, Matt Ryan's numbers without Julio Jones are not good if you look at him. Whenever, every time that guy misses but he's, games, but like Roman Matt said, Ryan he's also got, stinks. He's got Kyle Pitts now. But this is a rookie. This is a rookie tight end, though. I mean, look, I love Dude, Kyle. Okay, Pitts give too. me a break. You're the he's one that a... took him third overall in our skill draft, Chris. Don't, yeah, don't give me, I under... the... no, no, don't no, give me no, this no. crap right now. Hear me out, man. I I think he's going to be a really good player, but – it's year one, man. Like I, I think some people are starting to get a little overhyped. Yeah, what if he get he maybe he gets around? I think he'll get around eight, nine hundred yards. But this guy isn't Julio Jones. Let's let's pump the brakes a little bit on that. I think he's gonna be awesome, and that's why I took him in the draft because I think he's gonna be a great player. And he's probably gonna be solid this year. But I'm not gonna, I'm especially for fantasy. I'm not. I won't have him anywhere because he's gonna be drafted way too high for me to want him. I, I, I'm I'm. People are starting to get a little bit overhyped about him in his rookie season. I, but I think as a career, he's going to be awesome. But I don't think Matt Ryan will be around long term to see that through. 
Okay. That was a 2021 skill draft, just for the record, for this season. But hey, we, <laughs> yeah, won't, we won't have to keep getting into it. Um, all right, so we can hop into the tier list now. Um, unless anybody else had anything else for Julio. No. Nothing. All right. So, Roman, you lean us off here with Chris Carson. Yeah, as you boys know, I have a soft spot for Chris Carson, even since we did our fantasy episodes from last season. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky one to rank, though, because I think for the system he's in and the amount of uh, rush-heavy offense the Seattle Seahawks have, I think he's good for that system. However, would he look the same with any other team? Probably not. Um, and as we all know, he has the fumbling issues and he sometimes isn't reliable with injuries as well. Um, like I said, I might like him a little bit more than you two, but... Um, I think maybe just to be fair and hopefully gauge a consensus, but necessary, we, we can put him in serviceable, but I would be fine putting him in the back half no. of solid once we get that. Once no. we I'm not, I'm going to jump into it right away. Cause I think you, you're too hesitant on your initial takes. He definitely is in the solid tier for me. I think Chris Carson's a very good running back in this league. He just got a couple year contract and yeah, he may end up in the, the, you know, the lower tier end of the solid running That's back. But I think I he's a borderline top 10 running back in this league probably. He's a very good runner, has some good hands. I think he's going to have a very good season this year as well because they, they want to run the ball. So I, I do like Chris Carson. The only concerns and the reason why he's not considered an elite running back in the NFL and shouldn't be is because he's had some injury concerns. So you, you can maybe that bumps him down to serviceable, but I, I definitely wouldn't put him there. When he's on the field, he's great. Yeah, I completely agree with everything Chris said. I have nothing to add. Yeah, I'm, good, I'm, I'm the glad injury, you, yeah. the injury concerns lower his potential ceiling, whatever. Yeah, right. I'm I'm glad you moved him up. Like uh, Drew, you had Kyler and Tom Brady in our quarterback to your list. You uh, underestimated them, and I helped you bump him up. So thanks for that one. Yeah, I underestimated uh, Brady because I love him so much, and I overestimated Kyler because I hate him so much. But anyway, let's go into uh, Mr. Kareem Hunt now. It's my guy. Um, I, it's tough because I feel like if he was the clear-cut number one guy on the team, I think he would definitely be like above Chris Carson, in my opinion, because of talent and, and all that. Um, but it's I'm going to do the same strategy that Roman did. I'm going to put him in serviceable just because he doesn't have the opportunity, um, even though I think talent-wise he could be solid borderline elite, like we saw when he was the number one guy in Kansas City. Um, but I'm going to put him in serviceable. If you guys want to move him up to solid, uh, I'm – Fine with that, but um, I'm going to put him in service pool to start us off here. I, th I think he belongs in the solid tier right behind Chris Carson, personally. I think they're very I think they're very comparable in skill at this point because Kareem Hunt, I don't think he's quite the same player he was with Kansas City, but he's still a really good running back, and while he doesn't have crazy chances, he's been very efficient with the chances he does have. So I think solid is a good tier for him. He's definitely not in the elite tier for me, but another guy that, I mean, if he was on his own team, I'd consider him a borderline top 10 running back. Maybe Maybe – you know, 10 to 15 for guys like him and Carson. I think they're pretty much in the same tier of their own right there. Very similar. Yeah, I agree with Chris. And I, the only reason I'd have Hunt behind um, Chris Carson is just because of the opportunity. I think Carson yeah. gets a lot more volume in that offense. And uh, Kareem Hunt, he gets his fair share of the work, even though Nick Chubb is there. He also gets more receiving work than Chris Carson does in Seattle. Um, but I think, you know, Carson just has more opportunities and does a lot more with those yeah. opportunities. All right, I'm, I'm going to jump into what the other guy we're talking about right now, Nick Chubb, and I have a hot take with Nick Chubb. I think this guy is the best running back in the NFL, straight up, best runner in the NFL. Put him in the elite tier. This guy's a dog. I mean, last year he averaged almost six yards a pop uh, while splitting time with Kareem Hunt and coming off an injury. This guy is an absolute stud. He needs to get more targets. I know that's not his fault. He's a good pass catcher in my opinion. Not elite, but I think he, I think he catches the ball. I just think this guy – is just one of the hardest guys to bring down in the league. He, he always is breaking off long runs. I just think he's he's a, the best pure runner in football. It's as simple as that. He really reminds me of guys like Adrian Peterson back in the day, just being able to break off those long runs and just being really consistent all the time. It doesn't matter what defense they're playing. He, he's what makes this offense go, and I think – you have to respect that. At least give him the elite tier. I, you don't have to go number one overall, like like I think. But I think he's legitimately the best running back in football right now. Um, this is gonna sound really bad, but I think you know, I think it only, I think it only gives him a, like a half season before I can say he'll be elite, elite. And yes, he might. If he did put him in the elite tier, he'll probably be towards the back half. Uh, wow. But I want to see him do it again. I'd rather put him at the top of solid, the very top of solid. Um. I think, no you know, way. the fact that Kareem Hunt is there hasn't given him like, the full opportunity to take the full workhorse role and considering he has to split it with him. Uh, I think he could do more uh, if he was the number one guy 
or I mean, even though he is, he isn't, he splits time, but um, I'd rather, I'd be comfortable putting him in solid. I'm going to keep him in elite. Um, I'm going to keep fine. him in the back end of elite, in my opinion. Um, I think if, if it was like 2012 and Nick Chubb was where he is right now, I think he could be like an MVP candidate just because of the way the NFL was played back then. Um, you didn't have to catch the ball as much. It was more just kind of hand it off and chug, plug and chug or whatever uh, the saying is, and he would have been really, really good. And I think he does get dinged a little bit because he's, he's not awful pass catching, but he's not elite by any means in the pass catching regards. But as Chris said, he's the best like downhill runner in the league. Um, I think – Again, injuries are kind of a concern with Chubb as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a great player, though. So I, I'm going to leave him in elite, um, probably the back half. Um, and maybe if it gets too crowded there, um, as we keep going on, maybe we, I'll vote to move him down to solid. But um, now we got Josh Jacobs here for you, Roman. Yeah, I like Josh Jacobs a lot. And uh, for fantasy purposes, though, this year I'm very uh, skeptical of him with Kenyon Drake behind him. I think it will just ruin both your fantasy values completely. Um, I do like him as the player, though. If he was by himself in that, in that backfield, he'll be fine. Um, I had him on my fantasy team last year. Good for me, although he did have a little bit of injury concerns. Uh, I put him in solid. I put him at the top of solid, I think. Uh, if I don't think Drake will be there for long, but he'll probably get hurt anyways, and then Jacobs will have the full backfield to himself, and he'll go off like he normally does. Look, I no, I agree with you. I think Jacobs – I actually have started to change my opinions on Jacobs this year. I think – He's always gotten a lot of work stolen from me. He never really has a high snap share. I think he's still going to be fine this year, probably, you know, around 1,000 yards, 8 to 12 touchdowns. He'll be solid for fantasy, solid as overall. But if you're going to put him in front of these guys in solid, I know we don't have Nick Chubb down there now, and you're going to group Nick Chubb in that tier. They're not even on the same planet, man. I mean, come on. This is, it's not close. I mean, Jacobs is fine, but he like I think he's solid, but – there is no universe where Nick Chubb and Josh Jacobs are in the same tier list. So there, if he if he goes down to elite, I'm gonna have to leave. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, this guy's a stud. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, if, going back to your spot with Josh Jacobs, so I completely agree with that. I, I think that's a perfect spot for him. I think potential wise, he could be elite eventually, but like you said, the opportunity isn't there. But um, yeah, I, I agree with that. So I'll move into Aaron Jones now. Um, Again, this might be a hot take personally, but I I don't think he's elite. I'm going to yeah. put him in the top end of solid in front of Josh Jacobs. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just something about him. It's like sometimes he can go off, but then he can also disappear. I feel like I'm going to say this about every running back, but there's also some injury issues with Aaron Jones. Um, and when I just look at those guys in the elite tier, including Nick Chubb, um, I just think Jones is clearly behind yeah. all those guys. And when you see him with guys like Jacobs and, Carson and Kareem, it just looks better personally, and he just makes more sense. So um, I think top end of solid is the perfect spot for him. Yeah, no, I agree with where you have him. I think he's definitely better than Josh Jacobs and Chris Carson, Kareem Hunt for sure, but he's definitely inferior to a guy like Nick Chubb. Does not belong in the elite tier, but, you know, he just got paid. Maybe he can prove himself with this new contract that he belongs in the elite tier. So he's And he's going to have some opportunities potentially. If, if Aaron Rodgers leaves, he may, may be getting a workload heavier than usual, and Jamal Williams isn't there anymore either to steal a bunch of touches from him. So may see some more consistency, some bigger games from Aaron Jones coming up. So we'll have to see how we feel about him after the season season but I, I do like where you have him currently right now yeah i mean they do have aj dylan as well who many thought would be a good starter going into this year if they didn't bring that if they didn't bring back jones but uh i'm happy they gave him the bag i think he could have gone anywhere a bunch of other places too um but i i think i think the spot you put him is fine i think he's actually a bit closer to chubb than i think he is to jacobs but i think keeping him at the top of a salad is still a good spot Man, Roman and Nick Chubb is turning into Chris and Corey Davis here very, very quickly. But we'll move on to uh, to Chris and uh, Christian McCaffrey here. I mean, all right, I'll go into Christian McCaffrey. I know I'm going to get overruled by this. I would put him in the elite tier behind Nick Chubb. I yeah. see, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I think, look, and this is going to sound bad, but I think Christian McCaffrey is a little bit overrated. And that is personally because he has paid so much freaking money to play running back position, whereas there's guys like Nick Chubb, Aaron, even Aaron Jones' contract, it doesn't even touch – Christian McCaffrey's. I mean, th I mean, this team's going to be cash strapped at other positions now because they got to pay CMC twenty million dollars a year, which he's a very good player. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, if you look at a guy like Nick Chubb, 
this guy's breaking off 40 yard runs all the time. I feel like I don't see that that much from CMC. I think he just get, he gets the ball a lot. He's he's decently efficient. With it. He's a great pass catcher. But as a pure runner, I don't think he's the best in the league. I don't think he's elite as a as a runner. But his hands do put him in that elite tier. I know I'm gonna get overruled by both of you on this, but I think that's where he belongs. I, I, it's interesting that you brought up the over uh, hyped point. I think it's just the, the the way of the NFL. I know you can get a lot more for less the running back position. I think you know. The lifespan of running backs, as we know, is not very long compared to other positions. Um, that's why you see like Todd Gurley getting run out of town by both teams that he was on, uh, Adrian Peterson as well in his situation. There's other countless running backs who have had great primes and have gotten run out for younger talent. And I think uh, that's fair, but I think when you have an elite guy like Christian McCaffrey, you have to keep him there as long as possible. Uh, and I easily put him over uh, Nick Chubb, and Drew obviously agrees with me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you had a lot of – very fair points there, Chris. Um, but I think, yeah, I think CMC is just better than Chubb um, in terms of his talent, the way he dominated the game. Um, I think him and Sam Darnold are going to be really good, and especially seeing CMC a whole year under Matt Rule in that offense should be really, really fun to watch as well. Um, now we've got Clyde Edwards layer here for you, Roman. Yeah, this is not the first time I'm saying this, but he did burn so many fantasy owners last year if you drafted closer to the season and took him in the first round. Uh, yeah. He definitely won't go as high this year. And even in real life on the field, he was fine. Um, kind of got you know stuck with Le'Veon Bell towards the end of the season and kind of got the short end of the stick in the goal line work, just getting stuffed time after time after time. Um, but when he's good, he's fine. It's, it's kind of hard to rank him since there's no like unproven tier. I think he still has a lot more to prove. Um, I don't think he's any, close to anyone in the solid tier, so maybe just like really. stick him in serviceable at the moment. But I do think he'll be fine eventually. See, I would put him at the back end of solid personally, and I I do like Clyde edwards alaire I think I think people hate him a lot because of the you know he wasn't very good down the stretch with the Le'Veon Bell edition. He just wasn't getting the volume. But if you look at it, I think it was the first ten weeks of the season he was on pace for over eighteen hundred yards from scrimmage, which would have been third in the NFL. So. This he's a good running back, man. I mean, this guy he he had a good rookie season. I think his expectations were a little too high, and that, and that was I, I was part of that group that thought he was going to be absolutely dominant right away, which didn't happen. But they rebuild the offensive line. They uh you know the off Mahomes should be fully healthy after his toe injury. Uh, some some weapons out of town, you know. Damian Williams and Le'Veon Bell will not return. So I think he's going to have a lot better season, and I would put him at the back end right behind Kareem Hunt in the solid tier. I think he's he's going to be solid, but I'm all right leaving it at the upper end of serviceable. If you're going to gonna call him on a below-average running back, that's where we start to uh, butt heads. Oh, man, this is tough. I'm the tiebreaker here. I, I mean, I'm kind of with you, Chris. I don't have a problem with him being in the back end of solid – and I also don't have him a problem with. I have a problem with him being in the top end of serviceable. I am going to leave him a serviceable just because I don't want the solid tier to be too crammed up here. I think we're going to have some other guys in the solid tier. And like Roman said, at this point in time, I don't think uh, Ceh is on the level of those guys. But I mean, he could easily be the top guy in the solid tier by the end of this season. Um, it's uh, like you said, it's only been his rookie year. He didn't have a regular training camp. I mean, this is a guy talking about fantasy too in your redraft leagues. This is a guy who probably a lot of people. A lot of disgruntled guys like Roman right here who are ticked off because he had such a bad season for him last year might pass on him and you could get a steal there later. Oh, the yeah. But, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave him there. Now we got Mr. Mike Davis. And um, this might be controversial. But I think if you look at his thighs, simply his, his thighs are elite. <laughs> Let's just say that for right now. Um, but I'm going to put him – Maybe the back – he could be the last guy in serviceable. I'm going to put him in the back end of serviceable. He was a solid running back last year for Carolina. Uh, he's going to be the guy there in Atlanta, um, especially now with Julio Jones gone. I think they might have to run the ball a little bit more, um, and he could have another solid season. Um, yeah, I think he's serviceable um, in the back half there. If you guys vote to put him in by committee, I'm not going to freak out, but I think I think he's a solid guy, and I think he's, he's, not, he's not solid enough to be in the solid tier, but I think he's good enough to be in the serviceable tier. I think he's just an average running back, and that's why I think he should be in serviceable. 
See, in my opinion, I think I would probably put him in the front end of by committee because he's been mostly a career backup. I know he was he was pretty decent last year, but he started to break down at the end of the year. Really didn't yeah. handle the full workload. But he's a guy that you can bring in for you know stretches. I, I don't think he's going to be able to handle the full starting workload of the Atlanta Falcons. I think they're either going to bring in another back or they're going to use some one of these undrafted free agents or something to take some of the pressure off of him. I think he's he's definitely a committee back for me, which is no slight to him. I don't think he's a bad player. He's very elusive and he can catch the ball i just don't think i wouldn't put him in the same tier as like a clyde edwards of lyrics i feel like some of those other running rookie running backs are going to end up in this tier personally so i would have him in the, in, as a high-end committee back but i'll let roman decide i think the serviceable tier kind of just plays into maybe projection and expectation more than the sample size we've had now i think you know in carolina especially he only had a, a handful of games where he was the number one uh running back on the field and actually did very well and he was on a couple of teams before that. Nothing notable, though. Um, I do think he'll probably end up being the last running back in serviceable. And I'm fine keeping them there, actually, just purely on uh, projection. I know, like, we don't normally rank based off projection and expectation, but I think he'll actually be very good for what he, what he will be in uh, Atlanta. And we've already seen him with the opportunity with Carolina. So I, I think we can keep him there. Yeah, I'm um, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's average. And I think that's – you guys kind of both supported that. Back end of serviceable, top end of by committee. I think we're good there. Uh, right. But Chris, now you got Dalvin Cook. Yeah, I've had some really bad running backs to start this list, man. A lot of really, really underwhelming running backs. So Dalvin Cook, and and I don't really know how this is going to work. I guess I'll kind of let you guys pick where he goes. He's definitely an elite running back. I think he's better than Christian McCaffrey and worse than Nick Chubb. So I, if you want to put him in front of both of them, that's all right. But I mean, personally, I think he's better than Christian McCaffrey as a pure runner for sure. And he's definitely shown that he can catch the football as well. So, you know, it, it depends on what you guys want to do for that. But I would, I, I mean, my opinion goes Chubb, Cook, and then CMC. But I, whatever you guys want to do. I'm going to leave him right there for right now, Rome, as we kind of duke this out. I would have him in front of Christian McCaffrey. I'd have him the top guy in elite as of right now. Um, where, do you, where are you putting him? Uh, I have Christian McCaffrey as the best running back in the NFL. Therefore, I would have Cook after him. I actually think, Chris, you've convinced me with the Chubb takes. And I'd actually leave Cook where he is right now at third. Okay. I guess I got outvoted. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think Cook, he's got the injury concerns. Mm-hmm. But he mix it like he's a. I think he's a better person. I think he's a better runner than Nick Chubb, even though he has the injury concerns. He just dominates like Chubb. I just like yeah, he can dominate a game, but Dalvin like he dominates a game, and I think he's he's a little bit of a better of a pass catcher too. That's not a strong suit of his game though. DMC definitely has the the stranglehold there, but um, yeah, I guess we'll leave him leave him there in third. Um, I think Chris, you got the somehow to start this off. You got the three elite guys so far. I don't really know, I know. how that worked out, but that's that's what you did. But um, now Roman, I believe you have Mr. Devin Singletary. Oh, whoopee, whoopee! Uh, obviously, he's in the committee, but I'm gonna put him in the bum tier just because. Wow. Yeah, he's not great. Are you, are you shocked? Wow. Are, are yeah, you shocked? I mean, yeah, I, I don't think he's that bad. I think he belongs in the committee backfield. Kind of, I think he's similar to Mike Davis. He's not a guy that I want to handle the full workload, but he's another guy that is very elusive and can catch the ball. I think it's just Josh Allen being an awesome quarterback last year that made his fantasy value not that great. But I definitely think he's better than the other Buffalo mm-hmm. back who I would I would put in this tier. So in my opinion, belongs as a by committee mm-hmm. back. I think that's a perfect tier for him to fit in because I don't think he's just not talented at all. He definitely has some ability. Yeah, I'm, I agree with Chris. Um, because he was good. Like he wasn't that bad a couple years ago. His he rookie year, he was solid. Year. Yeah, he was solid. So I think yeah, by committee is fine. Um, and we're gonna have some other bums there, don't you worry, guys. We'll have some guys <laughs> that up there. But I think uh, I think Singletary's by committee. Um, now we got Cam Akers. Um, he was tough. really he was really good down the stretch last year. Um, but he like it took him a little while to come on. He's still like kind of like Roman said. I wish we had an unproven tier on this list. Um, because I think him and Clyde edwards Delay would both be in there. I think as it stands right now, I'm going to put him behind Clyde yeah, right here. I agree. Um, and I think – but he definitely has the potential to – he has the potential to fall, but he also has the potential to rise as well just because he's, he's, very, he's very unproven and we don't really know exactly um, where he could end up. Yeah, no, I expect Cam Akers will be a lot higher on this list going into next season. But I think people do overrate this yeah. rookie season. He was pretty irrelevant yeah. until the last few weeks of the season. He was obviously very good in the really playoffs. Good. But also have to factor in Daryl Henderson was injured, which I don't mean I don't think he's a superstar running back or anything, but that's a guy that's going to take carries yeah. away from him. They got a new quarterback, which I do believe is a massive upgrade, but we'll have to see how that works out. 
Um, obviously, they still got the pass catchers there. It should be a good offense. He should have plenty of opportunities this year, but he didn't prove that he really could catch the ball a lot last year, and he really didn't prove a lot of you know, groundwork until the very end of the season. So I'm curious to see how he steps up because I do think he's a very talented running back that has a lot to prove. And I, I think he, I think he'll be a lot higher. Him and Clyde both could be in that solid, maybe even the elite tier by the end of the season. Yeah, I think like all of us agree that all the rookies can make a huge jump this year. I mean, it's such a stacked class. But yeah, I, I'm perfectly fine with where you put them. Uh, at the beginning of the year, it was uh, Henderson, it was Malcolm Brown, and then it was Akers, sort of an afterthought, but he did come on strong at the end of the year uh, in the playoffs when it mattered most for fantasy teams. Um, and like you said, Chris, you were a big, you mentioned this even a while, a few weeks back, that, you know, Henderson coming back might affect him, it might not, but um, I think he'll be there coming on strong again, uh, and I think this spot will, is good for that. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree with everything you guys said. I'll, I'll jump into DeAndre Swift now. Uh, this is one of my favorite running backs in the league, personally. I The hometown Lions, I love DeAndre Swift. I think this is the best player on that football team by a considerable margin. But that being said, in his rookie year, I don't want to be too biased and put him in the solid or elite tier. I think he belongs ahead of Clyde Edwards-Alaire on the serviceable tier with a very big potential to rise all the way even to the elite tier because I think he's honestly a clone of Alvin Kamara. I think he's going to be extremely good. But similarly to those other two, he wasn't super consistent. He had the concussion, which set him back a little bit. He also had some injuries early in the season that he wasn't super involved until the end of the year. And, you know, I, I don't think you sh we should be biased about that and put him at the end of solid. I think the high-end serviceable running back with, you know, the asterisks of, yeah, he he's very talented. And I think he's the most talented of all the rookie running backs, in my opinion, to be honest. So I think he has the highest chance to get into that elite tier the fastest. Completely agree. I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought you were going to put him behind uh, uh, Clyde for a second, but I'm glad you uh, – put him where he was I, he's definitely i think i definitely rank him above acres just because of he was more consistent all of last yeah. season uh and i think putting him above clyde is fine just because of the lack of weapons detroit has um although when you when you're on the chiefs you know you have a high volume high scoring uh game so he's, there's obviously opportunity for that but i think swift has the, the opportunity to be a lot better um going into the season yeah i have like i said i have nothing to add i completely agree with that take Chris. you could put him behind clyde but i'm not it's He's also – him and Clyde are pretty equal, in my opinion, of, yeah. in terms of potential and everything. Um, now we got Damian Harris for you, Roman. Yeah, I, basically like kind of the Singletary is in the committee. I'd really – I think I'd put him above Singletary actually, but you know, I'm not going to really fight over it. It's just uh, – just he's just kind of there. I think he has some value going into this season. Um, he could come out as the running back one. I guess really not saying much though because there's no notable names that – strike me as, oh, the upcoming guys, but uh, yeah, that's where I'd put him. See, I actually disagree with you. I think he belongs in the serviceable tier ahead of Mike Davis, or Mike Davis needs to be pulled down behind him, because I think – I do think Damian Harris is a solid running back and he, he kind of proved that he was a starter last year by the end of the year when, you know, they had some injuries in the backfield like Rex Burkhead and a couple other guys. And he's definitely better than the other Patriots running back on this tier list. So I expect him to, you know, step up his game a little bit. I think he belongs in that serviceable tier personally. Um, I'm going to leave him where Roman put him. I'm going to stick with Roman. Um, but I think he has some significant potential to rise into even maybe even the solid tier. Who knows? But yeah, I think uh, he's he's a solid running back. Um, but because of the sample size, and I don't think he was as good as guys like Akers or Clyde or Swift. I think that's why I'll leave him in the by committee yeah, tier. That's fair. Um, as I'm looking at this more though, it, it is kind of weird having Mike Davis there. I feel like, but we'll leave him there for right now. We'll see how else that that service built here kind of fills out. Maybe we'll move Davis down. Um, but now I got Barkley um, coming off the injury back for the New York Giants, uh, kind of a team that everyone's kind of high on going into this season. It seems like they obviously added Galladay, added a lot of different pieces. Um, so he's definitely in the elite tier. Uh, I mean, it's tough. It's tough. I think I'm going to I'm gonna put him right here in front of Nick Chubb. Um, I think he's really good. I even maybe – if it wasn't for the injury, I know CMC was injured last year too, but Barkley – his injuries seems like they're always a little more serious, um, a little more concerning with him. So that's why I'm gonna put him behind CMC. But um, I think he's he's equally as good, and he's definitely an elite tier, no doubt about it, in my mind. 
So yet again, I mean, this tier list has been so weird because my tier list would be totally different. I mean, I, I'd have CMC fourth on my tier list, and I would have Saquon behind both Dalvin and Chubb after their really solid last seasons. That would So that would be my order. I mean, if you want to leave them there, I'm not going to fight you that hard on it because it is tough to rank these guys, and I'm probably of the minority thinking that Nick Chubb is the best back in the league. But that being said, Saquon is due for a, a big bounce back season or he's going to probably jump down to that. If he if he gets hurt again or he doesn't have that good of a season, probably belongs in that solid tier for me. I mean, the last two years really hasn't been really hasn't been in the news that much because he's been, you know, yeah. two years ago he was injured, kind of struggled when he came back and then turned up at the end of the year. And then last year was hurt pretty much the whole season. But his rookie year, he was unbelievable. And I'm not going to hold him against just getting hurt, a couple of tough injuries, but he needs to stay healthy for a season for us to really evaluate him as a true yeah. elite running back. Yeah, it's weird because, like, from a fantasy perspective, you want to think, you know, McCaffrey won Barkley too. That's pretty much how the draft's been going for the past couple of years now. But like you both said, the injuries are huge. Uh, this is going to be weird, but I think I would put Barkley maybe fourth just because of the lack of sample size and the injury concerns. I think, you know, like, uh, like you both ag agreed with, He's going to be one of the best running backs eventually in the league. Uh, going to make a huge jump, I think, once he's actually healthy. But I don't know. I, I don't think you'd look at a place being fourth in that list. I mean, Chris, you already said you'd put him behind uh, Dalvin, so I, I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't be too far-fetched. Okay, so are we moving him behind Dalvin? Is that the official move? Uh, sure. We can, we can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so, Chris, your run of uh, elite level of running backs continues here with Mr. Philip Lindsay. Oh, yeah, yeah. He definitely belongs in the elite tier. Now, uh, I'd put him right behind Damian Harris in the by committee tier. I think he's a little bit better than Devin Singletary, but, you know, not as good as Damian Harris. Per se. And he's in, he's on a team in the Houston Texans where he's probably not going to touch the ball that much. So, honestly, I don't think he's a bad running back by any stretch of the imagination. I think he does have some juice. He's, he's very fast. And, uh, but he wasn't undrafted free agent. So the Broncos didn't really feel like they had to bring him back and they drafted Javante Williams to replace him. So, you know, it is what it is, but Lindsay probably belongs in that by committee tier. Uh, I'm not really fight you over it, but I'd rather put him over Harris just because I think he's had, uh, the opportunity more than Damian Harris has. I mean, he did go to an, a, a pro bowl. So I think you gotta give him credit for that. Um, oh, yeah. And I guess he does kind of look pretty. I I don't I don't see him being too far off from Mike Davis, so we could probably bring him down a little bit just to make it even going going forward, having Davis in, in the by committee tier as well. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we'll sure we'll move Davis down. Um, so I actually would have Lindsey behind Devin Singletary. So I guess we'll just leave him mm -hmm. where he's at because uh, Chris, you got him right there in the middle. But again, it's right. they're all in the same tier, so who cares? Really, um, now on to better running backs here again. Uh, Chris, you got the jersey on. Roman, you're making the pick here. Where are you, where are you putting Austin Eckler? Yeah, I think he's very underrated for, uh, for in the NFL. I think that was a, a, a big sentiment last year. Um, obviously, great receiving work. I think, you know, as Herbert got there, he elevated all his weapons as well. Um, I think he's, I don't think he's elite, though. I'm going to put him in solid, just a matter of where. Um, Chris, would you like to? Be, you can make you can make the decision since you're wearing the jersey. Well, I'm not going to make a decision in the solid tier because I think he belongs at the end of the the oh, elite oh. tier. I think he's better than Aaron Jones personally. He's got a an, a great contract personally, one of the best contracts in the league for a running back. I believe it's like four years and 24 mil or something like that. So a very good contract for him. I think Eckler is an extremely talented running back. Has you know bulked up a little bit. I think he's going to be able to handle the workload. They've really improved the offensive line, so I think you're going to see a lot more work from him on the ground. And he was on pace for over 110 targets last year with Justin Herbert, which would have led all running backs in the league. So obviously a guy that is a pass catching specialist, but he's going to mix it up on the ground. Eckler is probably either my I, I really like Nick Chubb too as I said Eckler might be my favorite running back in the NFL though I think this guy is an absolute stud and like Roman said criminally criminally underrated so I would have him at the back end of a lead but I'm also okay if he is the highest or second highest in that solid tier yeah I moved him down to solid already because I'm with Roman I also think he's a high-end solid um, running back um the injuries are a concern. I feel like we say that literally say this about every yeah, guy exactly. in the running back here. Um, but there are a concern with him. Um, he hasn't like he's he, last year was his first year. I correct me if I'm wrong. As being the, the clear cut number one guy because Melvin Gordon was there. And yeah, you said he was on pace for such and such targets, which would have been great. 
um, but he couldn't stay healthy. So it, there's still some unprovenness to his game a little bit just because we haven't seen a full year of him being the number one guy. He definitely could be an elite guy by the end of the season, um, but there's still some uncertainty there. I just don't think we can put him in that elite tier just yet, um, but the potential is definitely there for sure. It's fair, for sure. I don't have much to add to that, though. All right. Uh, now we got, speaking of Melvin Gordon, here's Melvin Gordon here for me. Um, uh, this is tough. Uh, he didn't have a great year last year. Um, I'm going to put him behind Mike Davis and by committee. Wow. Um, Dang. Judging by that comment, I, he's probably going to get moved up here, but I just didn't like what I saw last year. I feel like he's kind of washed up, which is weird because he's really not that old. But injuries are always – again, injuries are concerned with him. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he was literally by committee last year in Denver. Um, and they got Javante, so it might be sooner rather than later Melvin's going to be a backup again. So I think that's why – I think he's been by committee. But if you guys want to move him up to the serviceable, I'm not going to be too upset about it. Personally, I would probably I, – I would move MG3 up to the uh, the end of the serviceable running backs, personally, behind Cam Akers. I think that's where he actually belongs. I think he is better than Mike Davis. And, and he, he didn't have a terrible year last season. He actually was like – in fantasy, he was like a high-end RB2 somehow, which I did not know that. But he wasn't bad last year. And, and yeah, he's going to end up probably going down to the by committee tier because they added such a solid running back in Javante Williams. But I still think he has he has the pass catching chops. He can catch the ball. Uh, he has a knack for the end zone. He's always had that for sure. But he struggles with fumbling, and he he's lost a little bit of that you know higher end speed that I thought he had for those few years where he was very good with the Chargers. So I think low end serviceable, maybe middle end serviceable is probably where he belongs for now. But I really only see him going staying the same or going down from there. So I'm kind of still in agreement with Drew. I just think he's better than Mike Davis. Yeah, I agree with that. In terms of fantasy, I mean, his ADP was too high for me to take him last year because obviously when you go to a new team, you still get, there's a lot of risk there. But he ended up proving a lot of people right for teams that didn't draft him just because he, he was not as good as they would hope him he would be. But, yeah, I, I agree. Put him in the back half of the, the end of serviceable. Yeah, we're all really in agreement there then. Um, I, I think, yeah, he's in serviceable or by committee, and he's gonna he, he's not going to go higher than that, I feel like. He's, just, he's no. only going to go down from here. Um, unfortunately, because they got Javante, at least unfortunately for him. Um, now, Chris, uh, you have <laughs> Mr. Sony Michelle. Yeah, Sony Michelle, his career is about to come to an end when he gets cut by the Patriots this year, and he probably will not find much work anywhere else. So go ahead and throw him in the bum tier. He's not close to even a guy like Devin Singletary. He's probably the worst running back on this entire list, and I would definitely have him in that tier. Yep, nothing to add. All right, yep. Roman, Elvin Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm a big fan of Kamara. Um, obviously, he's on my dynasty team, so I don't want to be uh, too arrogant here, but I think he's actually better than Nick Chubb. I'd come right behind Christian McCaffrey. And I also disagree because I think Chubb and Dalvin, and I think t Chubb and Dalvin are, I don't know, I mean, this one's tough. I think yeah, I would tough. have Kamara at the, I think I would have Kamara. This is brutal. I think I would have him at the end, like the very end of the elite tier, to be honest. I mean, he was wow. awesome last year. Don't forget that he really wasn't that good the year before that, yeah. and, they're, and they're running into a new offense now. He was awesome last year. Awesome. A very elite season, and I still think he belongs in the elite tier. But I don't see a gigantic difference between him and a guy like Austin Eckler and Aaron Jones. I mean, all the differences. I mean, what, Aaron Jones a couple years ago had 18 touchdowns. Why is he not in the elite tier list? I don't think there's that big of a difference between – Jones and Kamara, I guess it's just that Kamara had that season last year, and and the year before was he was brutal. The year before, I mean, probably serviceable would be if you were just going off yeah. year by year. Yeah, he was. He was I mean, he only had four or five touchdowns all year. Dealt with the injury as well. So, I mean, I'm not saying Kamara is washed or anything, and I do really like him. I just I'm not quite as high on him. I think he would probably be my fifth best running back in the NFL personally. Well, and I know we're not project. First of all, let me just say this: last summer we tore Kamara to, sh to shreds and we're like, don't draft him in your fantasy leagues. And then he went off. Um, so we might be wrong on this one, but I'm right there with you, Chris, two years ago, he was awful. Um, and also even last season, when you take Drew Brees out of the equation, he it wasn't, wasn't that good. He wasn't great. Um, and Drew Brees is obviously gone now. So maybe Jameis, maybe they find a connection. Who knows? Personally, uh, which with how good he was last year, I would have put him behind Dalvin. Um, but I think if we even it all out, I think we'll just put him, 
And since this was Roman's, the one that he started off, we'll just move him behind Chubb. They kind of even it out a little bit. He's definitely in that elite tier. Um, but like Chris said, um, he definitely could tail off quickly because it seems like with Kamara, he's either really, really good or really, really awful. So um, we'll still have to wait and see. But he was so good last year. You got to put him in that elite tier, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, sure. I agree. Um, so now it's me with Zach Moss. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, you could make an argument for by committee, but I don't really want to talk about Zach Moss for too much longer. So I think he's better than Sony Michelle. Oh, whoops. I don't think he's better than Damon Harris. I think he's better than Sony Michelle. So I'm gonna put him in the bump tier, but I had a Sony Michelle. And I do think if he can stay healthy, he could potentially like progress and be in that yeah. by committee to service with here. But right now, um, with what we saw last year, I think he's a bump, unfortunately for him. Yeah, I don't have any disagreements with this. The only point I want to make is that by doing this tier list, Buffalo, you need to draft a running back or trade for one or something, man, because these two don't really think they're cutting it. Their best running back's Josh Allen right now, and I guess that's going to stay that way for another season with both these two in the backfield. Yeah, yeah that's why that's why you had the Bills taking Javante Williams in the first round of our in our second yeah. mock draft. Which they is need one. Pretty fair, they need yeah. A running back, man. Well, um, they really yeah. do. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. I mean, I, I think Moss is just a little bit more likable just because he's younger, uh, you know, hasn't had an opportunity to screw anything up yet. But Buffalo just needs a complete upgrade overhaul in general in that backfield. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I'll jump into Chase Edmonds now. Uh, I thought Edmonds was was decent last season. He, uh, you know, he's not a guy that you want to carry the ball 25 times a game for a full season because he's not going to be able to handle that workload. He's not a guy that does anything at the goal line whatsoever. I think he's had one goal line carry his entire career, so you're not going to expect much from him from there. But he's a solid pass catcher, so I believe he, I would probably have him right behind Philip Lindsay. I think he's very comparable to Devin Singletary in the by committee running back, but he's a guy that, you know, he could go up a little bit this year with the addition of James Conner and the subtraction of Kenyon Drake, I could see a potential, you know, a potential little bit of a rise for him. You never know. His stock went up tremendously after Kenyon Drake left because people thought he was going to be the clear cut starter. Then they brought Connor in and that kind of ruined his value. I'd actually put him above Damian Harris just because of what he could do last year. I mean, even when Drake was sucking, he'd still have some good moments. Um, so I, yeah, I think he'll be good. I mean, if Connor gets hurt, which he's prone to as all the running backs are, apparently, you know, I think he'll actually be good in that, in the backfield. So, uh, that's where I'd put him at least. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Roman. Sure. I feel like him and Mike Davis are very similar back end of serviceable, top end of by committee with the potential to maybe even rise a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, so now we got Tevin Coleman um, here for, for you, Chris. Oh, I just went, man. This is for Roman. <laughs> oh, yeah, Roman. My bad. <laughs> yeah, at least, that's, at least that's what we think Tevin Coleman is. Uh, obviously, with the Jets now, um, I think he'll obviously, I mean, they're all reports he's supposed to be the leader of a committee. I mean, he's not clear cut, not guaranteed. I think he'll be a committee um, with Michael Carter there in the backfield as well, and maybe a little Ty Johnson as well. Um, I think this is a guy you can actually draft in fantasy just to get you through the first couple of weeks. You know, I think he'll actually be relevant for maybe the first three, four weeks before Carter emerges into his own. Um, and after that, you can drop him. So I'm going to put him in the bike committee tier. I'd actually put him above Damon Harris and right behind him. Wow. Evans. Oh, we have very different opinions on Tevin Coleman because this guy has been absolutely irrelevant for the last couple of seasons. I would have him I would have him behind Zach Moss, honestly. I think he stinks. I don't think he's got any juice left. I think anything they're saying about him leading any committee is a is an absolute lie. He might be the you know, the 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 very tail end of the committee potentially, but I, I mean, he's a guy that he doesn't really catch him any passes. I don't, he used to be kind of fast, but I don't think he's really even got that much juice left in him. And he really did absolutely nothing last year. So I don't see him going to the jets as anything for his fantasy value to increase. I think he's, he's, his fantasy value is going to die with his NFL career, which will be very soon. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Chris. That's why I moved him down already because we kind of outvote you there, Roman. But no, uh, fair enough. He, he is a guy like if you're late in fantasy drafts, we're going to talking fantasy here, and you're like, hey, let me just take a flyer on a guy. He's a guy worth taking a flyer on when there's like no one else on the board, like you said, Roman. I do agree with that take, but um, yeah, I don't think he's got much left in the tank. Um, but he was great for Atlanta back in the day. So shout out to Tevin Coleman. Uh, now we got James Robinson here. It's really really sucks for him. He was so good last season. Um, he kind of tailed off a little bit down the stretch, but um, then the Jaguars, uh, of course, drafted Travis Etienne, who we'll talk about here in a, in a second. Um, and Robinson, its role is unclear. Etienne was working out at wide receiver, so who knows if he's actually even going to – maybe Robinson will still be the running back one. I don't know. 
Um, for me, though, I would put him. Um, um, I'm going to put him ahead of Acres. Um, That's in the exactly right. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to move him around, I think he belongs in that serviceable tier, right with those other guys, those other rookies from last season. Again, Robinson, great year last year. Fortunate for him, just with the drafting of ETN. But yeah. um, hopefully, if it's not in Jackson, hopefully he can find another landing spot because I do think he's very talented. See, look, with Robinson, it would be for me, it would be an obvious smash that he would be in the solid tier if they had not drafted a first round running back. Because yeah. if you, I mean, obviously, that doesn't hurt his talent, but it's definitely going to, you know, we're projecting a little bit as well. It's going to hurt his value on the NFL field. And they clearly don't see him as a full lead back alpha dog guy, even though he was very good last year. So it stinks that you can't put him in solid, but this is where exactly where I would rank him. I know he had a better year than Clyde, had a better year than Swift, too. But that isn't going to happen again this year. ETN is going to be way too involved. Honestly, in my opinion, ETN will probably be the lead back in this backfield. You know, yeah. Maybe not just in carries, but I think he's going to lead the backfield in touches still. So it is what it yeah. is, man. It stinks for James Robinson. Hopefully you know, he can get traded or maybe you know somebody else signs into a Buffalo. long-term deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, you never know. That would be very interesting for sure. But uh, I'm, I'm worried about Robinson for sure. It definitely stinks, though. He was, he was good last year. Well, certainly going forward, I think Akers will have an upper hand to Robinson. That's why I kind of thought maybe we should put Robinson behind him, but you guys out, outvote me, obviously. But the only thing Robinson had going for him was just being consistent all of last season while uh, Akers only came on the back half of the year. Um, so that's definitely a fair spot to put him into. And he deserves a lot of credit. Uh, it's unfortunate his situation took a turn. Yeah, and also with Trevor Lawrence there too. ETN is going to be the guy most likely because mm-hmm. they already have that connection built in. But Chris, now you got Joe Mixon. Yeah, Joe Mixon, uh, a guy that I definitely like. I think he's a solid running back in the league. He's had, like every other running back in the league, some injury concerns. But even with those concerns comes a extremely talented running back that I would rank just ahead of Josh Jacobs, right behind Aaron Jones is where I would put him. I think he's a solid running back. I think he's going to have a good season this year, too. I, I do believe they had a minor – Their upgrade, the upgrades in their offensive line aren't totally yeah. – insane but he's getting you know burrow back jamar chase added to the offense can only really help them try to get to the goal line to get him some more red zone touches and i think i think he'll have a few more touchdowns this year so i think solid's a good tier for him he just has to stay on the field because those in that injury last year was extremely frustrating for them and extremely frustrated for me and i know roman as well for fantasy yeah i mean besides the injuries i just feel like he may be a he was a a tad underwhelming i think last year as well even in the games he was healthy i mean he did have some great games every every couple of weeks where he just absolutely go off yeah um and he did get the he did get paid in the off season and the loss of giovanni bernard will help him out even further just getting more work in the backfield um and their coaches believe he can be a, a workhorse guy uh i just need to maybe see it to believe it maybe just get a little bit more consistency within him i'd rather i'd push him a couple pegs down. Um, I think maybe Jacobs, I think Carson might be a little bit more consistent than him, but uh, Drew, what do you think? So we're going to go with my take because it's right in the middle of your guys' take. I'd have him just behind Jacobs would be it. Um, mm-hmm. So he's right middle. Between you guys, it seems like Chris, you're a little bit higher on him. Roman, you're a bit lower on him. So we're going to go right in the middle. Um, the injuries are kind of net neutral at this point because everyone's got injury concerns, but they are concerned with Mixon, but he's got the talent. Um, I think that Cincinnati offense though could be really, really good, and he could Nixon could be knocking on the door of the elite here this season because of how good that offense could be. We'll never know. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. Um, but now we got Najee Harris over to you, Roman. Yeah, it seems like whenever I get Chris's guys to rank, I somehow end up getting it wrong, and we have a little bit of a de- debate. Uh, but I do think he'll be the obviously the best running back in the class in a very underwhelming class, um, yep. com- and compared to the running backs from or the, the running backs that we have on this list from last year, I think they'll all kind of be in that same group, um, especially if Swift elevates, Clyde elevates, Akers elevates. Um, I think Najee just has it from day one, whereas the other running back kind of had to work for it. I think he'll be the clear-cut running back one day one. Uh, I'd rather put him I'd put him behind Cream Hunt, actually, just because the opportunity is there right away. But if we want to put him at the top of serviceable, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, with Najee, I, I'm actually I think I agree with you on this one. And it, it's kind of weird to say because we're like we're we're knocking Clyde, we're knocking Swift and Akers for not being that proven, but we're putting Najee in the solid tier. But I think Najee Harris is gonna be really good this year. And I think he's 
one of, if not the best running back of the last two years. He is a little older, so you have to factor that in a little bit as well, that he's he's more developed as a player because he's got a couple years on a, on some of these running backs. But in my opinion, I think he belongs right at the end of that solid tier with a major opportunity to jump up. Definitely, if he has a strong rookie season, which I believe he will have a very strong rookie season, then I, I would probably move him up a lot higher. But we'll have to see how that works out. Yeah, for right now, I would do what you just said, Chris, is I would put him down in the service level tier. I'd probably put him behind Clyde. It doesn't matter because you guys outvote me anyway. Um, but it's for all the reasons you just said, is that we just don't know. There's still some unknown there. Um, but he could be a guy who takes like a Barkley-like jump and is an elite-level running back right out of the gates um, it, very easily. But there are some concerns there with the Pittsburgh offensive line. Um, and it also wouldn't surprise me if guys like Swift and Clyde, maybe even Robinson if he gets traded, maybe even Akers, um, if he takes that number one role, that pass nod you here very, very quickly. But um, we'll leave him there in solid because you guys outvoted me, like I said. But now we got Leonard Fournette, um, which I believe I'm doing. Um, I think he's right here behind Cam Akers. I feel like yep. he's a serviceable guy. I feel like he's better than Melvin Gordon. Um, he is a little bit hindered there because of the uh, – Wait, that's Rojo. Jones. That's Rojo. Oh, wait, that's Ronald Jones. I was like – as I was talking, I was like, wait a minute, that's 28. <laughs> Um, so I got Rojo. I guess I just wanted to talk about I would just leave him there. I'd put him in the same spot, actually. Honestly, yeah, I would leave him there. I think I think they both might belong there. Um, yeah, I think I'd rather have him over Melvin Gordon, but I wouldn't have him over any of those other guys um, in the serviceable tier. I think he's just a solid running back. Um, very kind of similar to Mixon, but just on a lesser scale. He had some weeks where he just went off last year, and then he had other weeks where he was just non-existent. Um, and then, of course, he got banged up in the playoffs, and that led to Fournette kind of really taking over there and play off when he um, ran away with the starting job. But I think he's right there and serviceable. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you at all, Drew. Uh, sounds like Roman's right there with us. So I'm just going to jump yeah. into the uh, to David Montgomery now. Who This is an interesting guy to rank because his rookie year, he, he was kind of mediocre, similar to a guy like Clyde Edwards-Alaire, even Cam Akers. Had a couple nice moments, but really wasn't that consistent and you know wasn't was a little underwhelming with what people thought he was going to be. But last year... You know, down the home stretch, he was awesome. One of the best running backs in the league, in my opinion, in terms of what, he, at least for fantasy, man. He was a stud for the last, you know, five, six weeks of fantasy. And he ended up, I think, as the RB6 or something like that. So, so a very good season from David Montgomery. That being said, I don't think he's the most talented running back in the league, but I do think he's solid. Not in the solid tier, but he is a solid running back. So I would probably put him. I put him behind Clyde edwards alaire I think Clyde's a better player than him. I know he's not as proven, but I think David Montgomery's ceiling is definitely lower in this offense, who also doesn't have a great offensive line. And during that stretch last year, they played a lot of really soft defenses. So I think that had a little bit to do with it. And you'll see that this year. He'll be more in that, you know, he's just – he's solid, but he's not like anything special. Yeah, I guess in terms of consistency, I understand your point. I, I would have been okay if you put him in the solid tier. I wouldn't have argued with that. I don't know how you feel about it, Drew, but I think, you know, Montgomery has the opportunity to be good. I mean, the off offensive line is, is slowly rebuilding back to what it once was. Um, maybe if Dalton was a quarterback, he'd have a lower upside than with Fields as the quarterback. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't hate where you put him, but I'm just kind of a little surprised, actually. Um, so, Rowan, where would you have put him? Uh, maybe top of service hole or behind um, Kareem Hunt. I'd say. Okay, so I'm going to move him to the top of service because that's where I would have put him. Um, so we'll move him right there ahead of Swift. Um, he definitely doesn't have, like you said, Chris, he doesn't have the upside of guys like Swift or Clyde um, or those guys in the solid tier, but he was really good down the stretch last season. Um, and I think he's a high end serviceable to low end solid type of running back. But um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see, though, because he's another guy who could really fall off a cliff here if he doesn't get the opportunities um, in, uh, in your whatever year this is, year three, I think. Uh, now we got Miles Sanders um, for you, Roman. Yeah, our late round gem in his rookie year uh, came on strong to, to the back half of his rookie year, and then was supposed to take a huge leap last year, but very, very much underwhelmed in my opinion. Uh, I hope he can get back to what what he, people thought he was going to be. I mean, he has high expectations. I like him a lot. Just didn't really show it last year, um, and he also had some injuries along the way. Uh, considering where you put Montgomery, I'd put I'd put my uh, Sanders behind him. Um, I, can, I think I'd rather. Put, I think I'm going to put him behind Swift. Actually, I would put him behind Clyde even personally, but I think he does belong in that area for sure. I mean, Sanders, I think is a talented running back, but 
has been a guy that has been very inconsistent and, Mm -hmm. you know, last year really, I know it wasn't all his fault, but really struggled to catch the ball. Uh, He had one of the lowest completion percentages on targets out of any running back in the league. And I don't think that's all on the quarterbacks. I also don't think it's all on him, but with Jalen hurts, he's going to have less opportunities to run. Uh, Definitely less opportunities to run. But if this offense is good, maybe he'll have some more red zone opportunities. So we'll have to see. He has some potential to move up because I think he is a good running back and he has breakaway speed for sure, which is is a very, you know, it's an attractive trait for a running back for sure if they want to take a jump. And and he's got that and guys like, you know, Clyde James Robinson really don't have that. So so in that in that regard, he's got some explosiveness. We'll just have to see if he can turn or figure out how to catch the ball, you know, get some more red zone, punch home a couple more touchdowns every year. See, I even like I like Miles maybe even a little more than than Najee, dare I say? But like, he's right in there. Like in my opinion, and it doesn't matter because you guys outvote me anyway. I think he's in the back end of solid, high end of serviceable, kind of right where we have him. Um, I I definitely think last year was a nightmare for Philadelphia all all across the board, Um, and I think he could have a a really nice bounce back season, much similar to the guy who's right next to on this list and Clyde Edward Delaire. Um, So now we got J.K. Dobbins. And honestly, I really like him, even though he went to Ohio State. Um, and I'm going to move him maybe a little bit higher than you guys are going to put him, and you guys can just move him down. But I, I know Lamar is there, but I think he really showed down the stretch last season. He could be a really, really solid um, running back. Um, and, yeah, I really, really like him. Mark Ingram's gone. Um, so I'm actually going to put him behind Kareem Hunt in the solid tier. Wow. Um, I think, in my opinion – he showed a little bit more than other guys like Swift or Clyde. Um, so I'm going to put him in the solid tier. But um, if you guys want to move him down, I understand it. But I just wanted to show how much I, I like him. And I think he's going to be really, really good this year. I, yeah, I would definitely take DeAndre Swift over him personally. So I would move him down to the serviceable tier because I think Swift is a better player than him. And Dobbins, you know, I, you say he showed a lot more. I He was really efficient, but he did not – he caught like – what it felt like four passes last year. So he – and he's not going to be very involved in the passing game as long as Lamar Jackson's there. So it's not going to change anytime soon. I'm not saying he can't catch the ball. He just really didn't do it a lot. Whereas a guy like Swift did it, plus, you know, did did enough on the ground for me to want to rank him ahead of J.K. Dobbins. But I think I would take him over, over Clyde, James Robinson, Akers, the other running backs. He did prove for longer stretches of the season that he can, he can be trusted. Yeah, I think it's probably because of the opportunity and the volume of rushing attack that they have in Baltimore that elevates them for, for sure. I mean, he's obviously talented, and Drew, you like him a lot, um, but I like where we put him as well. All right, I, I knew that was going to happen. Um, that's why I just wanted to make a statement by saying how I like him that much. Um, it's I think it's very similar to like a lesser degree, like the CMC versus Chubb debate. Like one's a pass catcher, one's um, – uh, not a pass catcher in Chubb. It, then we got Swift and Dobbins, very similar. Uh, now we got Antonio Gibson, though, here for you, Chris. Um, Gibson, for me, uh, see, this is – I'm. we may disagree on this one, too. Gibson, I think he had the best rookie season on any running back in this list. I think he was awesome. Uh, he didn't catch a ton of passes, but he was fantastic on the ground. I would probably put him – I'd probably put him over Chris Carson, man. I think Antonio Gibson's awesome. I think he's the best running back in this class now, and and we may disagree on that later as well. I know there's still one other big name running back on there, but I love Antonio Gibson, man. I think this guy's an absolute stud. Yeah, it's weird just because you know, obviously these second year running backs, you know, were drafted in a certain order. Clyde obviously going first, but uh, in terms of what they actually showed last year, I mean, it's very it's very uh, scrambled in terms of in terms of that. So it's weird putting him above guys like Clyde and, and uh, Swift. But I mean, he did have a great, great season, uh, especially the towards the end where they needed him the most. And all, unfortunately he has a turf toe injury that could, you know, linger into the yeah. upcoming season that they're actually still worried about. So hopefully he gets uh, good on that, but I'd rather put him in service. Well, kind of just even it out where the other rookie running backs are. I'd rather put, I can put him, I would, I would put him personally uh, in front of Dobbins. So we're going to, again, unfortunately, go with what I think is the correct order. And I'm going to put it behind Kareem um, to kind of even it out. I think that's pretty much exactly right between where you guys both have him. Um, again, I know I think this is like the fifth guy in a row I've said this for, but because he's a rookie running back, he's in that back half of solid, top end of serviceable with the potential to go into the high end solid to elites here. Um, showed a lot last year. I felt like, um, unfortunately, had that injury. And like you said, Roman, that is lingering. So hopefully he can. He can heal up and get better. But 
Um, now we got Miles Gaskin for me. Um, he's a guy who uh, who Chris kind of was like, oh, man, they're going to take Najee Harris and Gaskin's going to be done. And I was very scared as having him in Dynasty. And somehow, for whatever reason, Miami didn't take a running back, so thank God. Um, so Gaskin is still the guy, but it is it is a little worrisome because um, he didn't he showed some stretches last year that he was good, and the other stretches he was just kind of eh. So I think he belongs in the serviceable tier. Personally, I'm going to put him right behind Cam Akers. That's a good spot for him. Um, I think he has potential. Again, he's a young guy. We don't really know too much about him, um, so he could go into that solid tier if he as long as he kind of remains that opportunity um, in Miami, but. Um, at the same time, in his in his, I think that was his rookie year last year, I believe, or maybe his second year. Um, he didn't show as much as got young guys like Akers, Robinson, Clyde, Dobbins, Swift, Gibson, etc. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna put him right there in the serviceable tier. Yeah, that's exactly where I would put him, Drew. I think that's a good spot. Uh, he's he's got a lot to prove this year if he wants to stick around long term, though. You know, he was solid last year, but he's not really a guy used around the goal line a ton. So you got to factor that. He's a guy that can definitely catch the ball, but he doesn't have that top end speed either. So I'm I'm definitely curious to see if they end up going running back in the first round of their next year draft because there's some good running backs coming out of the next class. But if he proves enough. You never know, man. I mean, this he could end up uh, he could end up rising on this list potentially. And I yeah. think for fantasy, he's a, a good, uh, not really a sleeper because he's not going to go that late. He's probably going to be you know that sixth, seventh round pick. But I think he's a good yeah. pick in fantasy if you miss out on some of the top running backs. You go with the uh, you know you know zero RB approach. I think he's a good guy to have as you know your RB one or RB two if you're in that situation for sure. So I think he could be good. Yeah, he's. Yeah. I think he's an uncontested starter on that team. So he just needs to make the most of his uh, opportunities down there. I mean, obviously Miami could have easily taken a running back with any of their multitude of picks. Um, but I'm excited to see what he does. I mean, you, I think they, they need him to come through because um, they. I think Miami's – they're going to make the playoffs, I think, this year. Uh, I think the expectations are really high considering that they were just so close last year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now we got Chris over to you for Travis Etienne. Yeah, Etienne is a player that I like coming out of the draft. He's got a ton of speed. He can catch the football too. And, I, I mean, his – I think he's, he's a pretty good all-around back, in my opinion. He's a little bit undersized, maybe not the biggest guy. But I think for this list, I'm going to put him behind Cam Akers. I think that's where he belongs, right in front of Gaskin, right behind Cam Akers. It's a tough spot for him to be in because you know he could end up proving that he's more talented than James Robinson very quickly next year. But for now, with James Robinson's production, ETN still being kind of unknown, I think where he's at on the serviceable tier, he can obviously rise. He's a rookie, but I think it's a, a fair spot for him right now. Yeah, I'm not going to fight too much over. I would have put him in front of Akers, uh, actually, just because I think, you know, I think with the team that they have, I think it's going to be a good opportunity for him. And obviously it's going to be conflicting with Robinson there. I mean, I like Robinson a lot. We, we all do, I think. Um, and Etienne kind of, I think he'll have his role, whether it's slot or whether it's third down back. But I, you don't just draft him for no reason. So I hopefully they have a plan for him. And I think, you know, he'll he'll be somewhat consistent. Yeah, and actually, Chris did the perfect spot for him because I would have put him behind Gaskin personally. So you found oh, the spot right, right in the middle, middle there. Um, but I think it's very fitting that he's right in the in the vicinity of James Robinson right there because I think uh, they're obviously in, a, in the same situation. So um, now we got Leonard Fournette, who I jumped the gun a little while ago and started talking about him too soon. Now you can talk about him here, Roman. Yeah, I mean, it came on came on uh, strong down the stretch into the playoffs. Um, I'd rather I actually put him right behind uh, uh, Rojo, actually. I think they're both similar. They can do a lot of the same things. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, coming back in a one-year deal, bringing the team back together, I think he can be a lot – I'll have he'll have a lot more work than he did last year, I think, just because of how much they didn't know. Or he was signed pretty much last second, so he had to incorporate him to the offense the first few weeks. But I think he hits the ground running again next season uh, and does well. See, personally, for me, I would have Leonard Fournette as the highest end of the by committee – my committee group personally, because you know, I in, in Fortnite, I trashed him a lot going into last year, and then he got cut. You did, then, yeah. You know, he was pretty irrelevant during the regular season with Rojo. Rojo got hurt, and then Leonard Fournette took over a little bit. So I think that Rojo injury had a lot to do with Fournette's rise, which he was very good in the playoffs. I'll give him that, but it's really the only. The only good Leonard Fournette we've seen in the last couple of years, in my opinion. So I would have him in the by committee tier, but if you guys want to leave him there, I, that's all right. We just got a lot of guys in the service pool and not a lot of guys in the committee tier. So I think, in my opinion, he belongs to be a little bit lower, but I'm not going to fight too hard on this. Well, it, right now it's a bell curve, right? So the, the service pool tier is the tier in the middle. It's got the most guys. So I think we're, we're doing a decent job because um, I'm going to leave him there. Um, because I, I think he's right there with Ronald Jones, like uh, Roman, you said. 
Um, and it's looking at those guys in the buy committee tier. Again, I'm lower on Melvin Gordon, so it's a little screwed. Uh, um, but I, I do think Fournette's better than those guys in the buy committee tier. Um, but again, he's not great. Um, so I think leaving right there in the serviceable is perfect for him. Um, so now we got Jonathan Taylor here for me. Um, I'm going to put him ahead of Antonio Gibson um, yes. in the solid tier. Um, he really struggled the first half of last season. Um, but re- And I traded him in fantasy. And then he really kind of took a- took it off a little bit there down the stretch. Um, Indy's got a good, solid offensive line. They got the quarterback situation with Carson Wentz should be should be decent there still. Um, and I think he could have really, really, really good season. He could be an elite level guy um, at this time next year. Um, but yeah, I think him and Antonio Gibson, in my opinion, were the two best rookies last season. Um, at least they they showed the most. They they might not have the upside of guys like Clyde or Dobbins or Swift. Um, but in terms of last season and what we know for sure, JT I think was a little bit better than Gibson. Look, uh, I'm gonna. This may, you know, we may butt heads on this. I think Jonathan Taylor's rookie season was considerably overrated. You know, I, he really wasn't that good until like week eleven. Similarly, some of the other guys we've been talking about that yeah. are young, like Cam Akers, he wasn't that good before, you know, week twelve, and they ran into some really easy defenses, and then he was really good, and obviously he looked better in those games. But like, I mean, how much are we gonna take all the stock in that and nothing in anything else? I, I, I don't, I don't really, know, I don't really know what we're doing. I'm not saying you're crazy for having him here but like i i I would have him at you know high-end serviceable probably that's probably where i would i would consider him he's still a very talented player he's he's super athletic but especially in fantasy this year and this is i know you're not you didn't say anything about this but i'm gonna say it i'm i had no interest in him in the first round this year i will you somebody else can feel free to draft him i don't care who knows i won't be taking him in the first round i do i don't see the difference between a guy like him and john and you know Clyde or Akers or you know any of these guys on Gibson for that matter and none of those guys are first round picks so I don't really get why he is all of a sudden a first round pick and people are like yeah he could be the number one running back he's not going to catch the ball that much because they don't have Carson Carson Wentz who can't dump the ball off to anybody also Naeem Hines is going to take all those bad dump offs so he's not going to catch the ball at all he's going to have to score like 20 touchdowns for them to to for him to have any chance of being the overall RB1 which again is not a no, more popular opinion, just I've seen it a couple times on Twitter from different analysts and stuff. I just don't see that in the cards for him this year. I think he's more of that high end, serviceable, low, low end solid. But I would, I think Najee's going to be better than him. And I think Gibson was better than him last year. So there's my rant. I, I was, I knew this was going to come up, but I, that's my opinion on him. I, yeah, real this, quick, before yeah, you go ahead. jump in, Roman, um, I do agree with the fantasy take. He, I don't think he's a first round guy. And that's why I think he's, I don't know how many running backs behind but it's more than 10 i think um so yeah i don't think he's a first round guy in fantasy but um personally i just i just like him a little more and he's like gibson yeah he was good but also he was only good for like in stretches too because right? he had the turf toe so i mean there's concerns with all the rookie running backs across the board and i think low end solid high end serviceable is again the, the sweet spot for him yeah there's a lot to unpack there for sure first of all i'll just say that I think all the rookie running backs at least had to work for their role. I mean, it wasn't given to them right away, except for Clyde, who had, who went off game one. Um, he got lucky with the Marlon Mack injury week one. That kind of helped him out very much so. Um, but, I mean, he did have a good season with Phil Rivers, and I think Wentz, uh, Wentz is considerably better. Um, so I think he'll take an L, a jump for sure. And like you said, Chris, Hines will still be there. Mack is still there. But I think Taylor will yeah. be arguably the one going in uh, going to the season. And yeah, like you mentioned, I mean, Wentz is not good at the dump offs. I guess that's kind of why we were ridiculing Sanders earlier because he wasn't he was struggling in that aspect too, um, with Wentz last year. Ultimately, I, I like where we put him. I was going to say the same thing with you, Drew. I like him where he is now. I think he'll be the first running back taken uh, out of those second year group, uh, running backs in the draft next year. Um, but I think he'll take a big leap too. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see how it works out. I personally think he has been overrated both in real life and in fantasy, but that doesn't mean he can't be still good. And he, he could definitely prove me wrong for sure. I just, I mean, he, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to crown him anything special for having a few good weeks when we David Montgomery did the same thing. Honestly, 
I mean, Dobbins did it down the stretch. Akers did it down the stretch. I mean, Swift was very good down the stretch. Even Gibson before his injury was very good down the stretch. But I feel like he gets a lot more praise than those guys do because, you know, in week 17 he had like 250 yards in a game that really didn't mean that much. So I don't know. I mean, that's just my opinion on him. It, he can definitely prove that p- opinion wrong. I just – I don't know. I don't want to crown him some superstar running back before he actually proves he can do that for a full season. No, I, I agree with that. I mean, even going into the NFL draft, I mean, he was still – he still was very raw, had a lot of stuff to work on. I think there's still a learning curve there, like you said. Um, so I don't think he's far and away the best running back out of that class. But um, I think just having the rookie season where he was at, and I think, you know, all things considered, I think it's fair to put him where he is there. And obviously, we're not putting him over um, some other guys like Hunt or Carson. That would be a little too ridiculous. But um, – at least all the rookie running backs from last year are in the same vicinity, which I think is fair because they're all really close in my opinion. Yeah, and just to kind of close this off, I do agree with you, Chris, in that I do think he's a bit overrated when people put him. As I have seen some people put him above guys like Austin Eckler, above guys like Josh Jacobs, Joe Mixon, and it's like, okay, let's yeah, pump no. the brakes a little bit. Um, yeah. I think where we have him in that same vicinity with like the rest of the rookies is, is a reasonable spot to have him in. Um, all right, so now, Chris, your last one of the episode, David Johnson. Yeah, um, with the three running backs left on the board, I'm really happy that I got David Johnson of the three of those. He's such a superstar. Now, I would probably put Johnson. He was okay last year. He had some decent fantasy production, but I think that didn't match his real-life talent. I think he's – I'd probably put him behind Mike Davis in the by committee tier. I don't think he's anything special, and they signed like 38 running backs in the offseason, so there's – I mean, there's a reason for that. They don't just – I mean, it is the Texans. They're kind of dumb, but – they're trying to find a running back they can rely on as their, their go-to lead back starter. And with signing 17 running backs, I don't really see that any one guy is going to take over that true job. I think Johnson might lead the committee because he can catch the ball a little bit. But, I mean, Philip Lindsay's going to be involved. I mean, Rex Burkhead's there now. Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram's there. He's going to get yeah. occasional touches, I'm sure. I, I think there's you, another guy, Johnson's too. Really good. No, he's, he's gone Johnson's now. Good. But they got another huh? guy there that I – blanking on it there's another one there too but it's just a lot of running backs in a bad offense that already couldn't really run the ball before with david johnson so you know i think this is probably as high as i'll be willing to put him yeah it's it's an ugly backfield this year but he actually wasn't too bad the first couple of games of uh 2020 yeah. i mean i think he was fantasy relevant for a decent portion of last season uh, and obviously david johnson being himself he's very injury prone and kind of kind of chokes it halfway through the season so uh, not a guy I'm targeting. I, I, I don't think I would be surprised if he was drafted like within the first 10 rounds, but ultimately just a guy to stay away from overall. Yeah. I mean, like you could make an argument. He's over Melvin Gordon, I guess I'm not going to, I think he's no. in the perfect spot right there behind Mike Davis. Um, right in the vicinity of Philip Lindsay too, his new backfield mate. But with those final two guys on the board here, let's not spend any more time with David Johnson. So Roman with your last one, uh, take us away here with Derek Henry. It's funny because I think every every running back in the elite tier we've had some debate on, except Christian McCaffrey. Or you no, know, Chris, you thought he was you thought Chubb's the best running back in the league. But I'm actually gonna put Henry right behind McCaffrey. I, I, that's how much I like him. That's how much I think he's such a bruiser. I mean, obviously, I don't think he has much. I, mean, I gotta say this carefully. I think the running backs behind him might have more long term uh, potential in the tank than than Henry does. I th- obviously he's getting up in the age a little bit, but. I mean, I think he's just really dominant for what he's doing right now. You got to give him the respect. Um, no one can stop him. I just, it's just so, so dominant and, and nice to watch. So I think he's going to be, I think he should be within the top three of the elite tier, in my opinion. For me, I would have him behind both Cook and Chubb. And then, jeez, oh, with, the, with my disagreement on the tier list with CMC being at one right now, it's, it's hard for me to like really track it, but I would definitely have him behind both Chubb and Cook at least. If you want to live in there, I'm all right with that. I'll, I'll kind of let Drew make the determination with what he heard from both of us. But the, the elite tier list, I definitely have some disagreements with the order that's you know on the board, obviously. So it's, it's tough for me to rank him, but I know I would put him behind like ch- at least Chubb and Cook, personally. Yeah, like for me, it's tough because Chubb is there. Because like I would put... I would put Henry above Chubb, but I think I'd put Cook and Barkley above Henry... And I, I, I don't know. It's just a mess. So we're just going to leave him. We're going to leave we, him right We've never there. had this much controversy with, with the elite tier, especially. I mean, we know they're elite. We just don't know what order to put yeah, them. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement that those are the six elite running backs in the league. No question. No question. Um, 
It's just we have different orders, I guess. Um, so yeah, we'll just leave them there. I, I'm, it's not like egregious. It's not like, oh my god, I can't believe he's number two. Um, but yeah, it's just a mess. Because if I move him, I'm going to be ticked because I moved him. So we're just going to leave him there. Um, the final one of the episode, it's me. It's Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, man. Last year was a brutal year for Zeke. Um, I think I might over appreciate him a little bit here because of the the impact Dak is coming back. I'm going to put him at the very end of the elite tier. I think he's better than Eckler. I think he's better than all those guys in the solid tier, um, even though how bad he was last year down the stretch. Um, but I'm going to put him there in the back half of the elite because Dak is still there. Um, but you could make a very serious argument he belongs in the top end of solid because of how bad he was last season. Man, this is this is a tough one, man. Uh, see, when when you first put him in the elite tier, I was not okay with it. I was like, come on, he, he wasn't that good last year. But when I th- really thought about it, he wasn't. He was still solid last season. He had a few bad weeks. Yeah, he wasn't as efficient. Obviously, I I think I agree with you. I think we need to see him next season with you know the whole offensive line was hurt. They'll have some of those guys back. They'll have Dak back, obviously, and won't be Andy freaking Dalton anymore. Uh, so I think I want to see Zeke. I want to see what he does. If he fails again this year, obviously we move him down a lot. But I think I want to see him fail. We've seen him be good for too long, and then he was still pretty good but not as yeah. good with a crappier offense. And now we're just going to crush him. I don't think that's fair. I think we should give him one more year before we say he's just totally washed and he stinks now and before we say Tony Pollard's better than him and stuff like that. Because <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. there's people that think he is, and I think that's ridiculous. Zeke's a guy that he, he's – carried a big workload for the last five seasons he can catch the ball he's got some breakaway speed he's very good around the goal line he's a good all-around running back and i think he could honestly move up by the end of the season if he has a good season because he was very very good last year before Dak went down with the injury the first four weeks of the year he was one of the best running backs in the league for fantasy and real life so i want to i want to see him i want to see him fail before i'm willing to willing to appreciate what he's done for the last five years yeah and now i mean real quick roman sorry he went from top three to back half a top 10. And I think people were like over exaggerated because he went from being like the top running back in the league to like back half of the top 10. And that's why we kind of, oh my God, Tony Pollard. But yeah, sorry, Roman, but you can go. No, yeah, I think that's a good enough drop for him having a bad season. And as a fantasy owner who acquired Ze- uh, Zeke after the deck, uh, Andre, I must say I regret it heavily and he was very worthless for the rest of the season. I couldn't even, I couldn't even give him away for free. But I think like you said, Chris, we need to give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, it was just one season. Obviously, he needs Dak, as many running backs need their quarterback to be there to be good. But, um, yeah, I think leaving him where he is now is fine, which obviously he has room to, for improvement once he bounces back, as I expect him to be. Um, but, like you said, if we did this list before last season, he'd probably be at the top two or three for sure. Yeah. Yep, you're you're um, 100 right. So I, I think of the three position tiers we've done so far, I think the running back one at elite tier is definitely the most filled um, but overall, I mean, it seemed like that the elite tier was highly contested and then like that range from the, the low end of solid yeah. to the high end of serviceable was, was the most contested here. But, um, it seemed like for the most part, we were all in agreement. Um, they just kind of argued about the order a little bit, but yeah. definitely a fun episode. Do you, anybody want anything they want to add here before uh, we close it out? At least we didn't have to debate about Corey Davis again. That's all <laughs> I want to say. And other than that, no, not really much. It was it was a lot of fun, guys. I, I like doing these tier lists. They're a good time. Yeah. At least just goes to show that you have to – well, I mean, I personally love to stack RBs early on just because once you get kind of in those middle rounds, you're not much left um, as we kind of see here, even though there's a lot of good serviceable guys. I mean, after that, there's not much depth after that. And there is one thing I actually wanted to bring up to you guys. It just kind of came out um, a half hour ago or something. I saw this too. That Aaron Rodgers is not going to be at – at mandatory mini camp, and the Packers have the opportunity to find him every practice he mess, even going up until the season. So, do you think he ever shows up, or what, what are we thinking here? <laughs> He's not showing up. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, man. Probably not. I don't expect. I I think they're still going to trade him. That's my opinion. I, I know they say they won't. I think they're similar to the Watson, like you know that stuff going on before all the allegations. Aaron Rodgers right now doesn't have any allegations, so. I expect them, despite the, ooh, we're not going to trade them, they're going to trade them, man. They'll, they can get something for them, they're going to do it, and then they're going to move on because that's what they should do rather than you know, play this political battle with him and let him retire, and then he can go join yeah. whatever team he wants in a little while. I think they should trade him for – they can get picks for him. They can get a lot of first – they can get a, probably a couple first-rounders for him. 
if the Lions could get two for Stafford, they could probably get two plus maybe even a little bit more. You never know. I, but I don't know. Getting two first is tough just because you want everybody knows. You want a championship? Well, everybody, yep. everybody, know, everybody knows that they're trying to trade them, so they have no leverage. So if they come on and like, hey, we want three first, they're going to be like, okay, go screw yourself. I'm going to let them retire, and then I'll sign them after that. So I definitely want – and the Lions also got two for Stafford because they got one – for Stafford, and they got the other one because they took on Goff's contract. So, um, I personally, though, despite that, I agree with you, Chris. Um, he's either going to retire or he's going to get traded. I don't think he's ever going to step foot on the Packers training facility in Lambeau, at least in a Packers uniform, ever again. Um, I am right there with you there. And I, I don't like playing the pettiness game, obviously, because Rogers, I kind of had his holdout, a little bit of some drama there. But I mean, if the Packers, I think. It would be somewhat reasonable just to start finding him. You know, that's not going to be a huge amount out of his contract. I mean, he's still the highest, a high, highly paid player. But I mean, if you if you if Rogers wants to be petty, then you can always just find him back and even it out. But I, that's when it gets really ugly. I think that's for sure he's going to be a trade. But if, hopefully, they don't they ruin it. If they find him, he, he, it's done. If they find him, he, it's it's absolutely done. Like, yeah. And I think I believe they can do some sort of excused absence thing, so he doesn't have to get fined. Um. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Definitely, uh, the, with the Julio drama kind of done now, um, Aaron Rodgers now has full center stage, which I think is exactly what he wants. I think his ego is enormous. Um, but yeah, so that'll be a developing thing. We'll have to keep our eyes on here as the offseason progresses. But uh, that'll do it for this episode. Once again, we are the Zone Defense Podcast. Um, as I just mentioned, we have plenty of offseason content. Uh, we'll hopefully be breaking down the Aaron Rodgers trade, retirement, whatever, um, sooner rather than later. Um, we'll also be doing fantasy football rankings, fantasy football mock drafts, and t- uh, division previews for the 2021 season. We'll probably be starting those up here in the next couple weeks. Um, and then with the NBA playoffs in full swing, uh, Chris and I are also uh, going to keep trying doing the uh, zone defense basketball hours. Um, so be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Spotify and Twitter. Add zone defense bot and search us on Apple Podcasts so you don't miss a thing. Smash that like button and drop comments down below. Let us know your thoughts on our tier lists, on the Julio Jones trade, and as well as the Aaron Rodgers developing drama. Um, but once again, that'll do it for this episode. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Peace. See ya.